Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about a recent photo trip I did down the Oregon coast. Drove down from Seattle and uh, did the whole coast top to bottom. I explored quite a bit of the northern part of the Oregon coast in the last year or so, so I decided to skip over a couple spots that are normally worth visiting, but I only had about four days for the trip and so I, I knew I wasn't going to be able to see everything. But quickly went down past Seaside and Cannon Beach and did the, the Three Capes track, the Three Capes Drive, I guess. The, the road had been closed for a while, so you couldn't do the whole thing. But it was nice to be able to do some, some exploring around there. Started off at Cape Mears. Next up is Oceanside. I think I'm just gonna, it's 3.30. I think I'm just gonna walk around the streets for 30 minutes. Um, yeah, it's a cute little town. Let's see what we find. trip I decided to just experiment with using just prime lenses. I, I had a bunch of other lenses with me just in case so I didn't really feel restricted at all but for essentially the whole trip with one exception that I'll talk about later I used just a 35 millimeter and 85 millimeter prime lens and uh, yeah for the most part I didn't really feel restricted at all and it was uh, it's kind of nice. Man, that's a cute little town. I could have spent a couple of hours walking around the, the streets here and it's not big at all. It's really photogenic. But I don't have that much light left today so I'm gonna keep going down towards Cape Lookout. I'll probably just drive on past that. And then uh, Cape Kuanda, maybe hit that for sunset. What a day. <laughs> Feels like April or May. Crazy. So I um, got here with like 15 minutes before sunset and um, I've gotten some shots that I really like from the beach before and more like traditional landscape shots and for whatever reason I'm really just feeling more of the like travel photography genre lately as opposed to pure traditional wildernessy landscapes without a lot of um, human infrastructure in it and uh yeah so I'm, I'm i'm digging the human landscapes more and more so i decided just to walk down into the neighborhood a little bit and see if i could get any shots um kind of featuring the houses or off the houses and uh so far it's really nice in my mind this is a big part of the oregon coast is this kind of thing and uh yeah, it's nice to be able to photograph it and include this aspect of this landscape as well. Lincoln City after sunset. Just got a night in a cheap hotel. 
then I uh, did not wake up for sunrise the next morning. It's usually not something that I end up doing on these trips as often as that I think I will. I'm just not much of a morning person. But I did get up in time for the, the lake to still be really nice. I mean, it's, it's nice for most of the winter anyway. It just never really gets that high in the sky. But I drove south from Lincoln City and just explored uh, just along the coastline. Saw some nice scenes from a, just from some pullouts on the side of the road. Stopped off at a couple different state parks. Just generally did some exploring. I, I'm somewhat familiar with this area. I've done it a couple times. But I feel like every time I come down there, I find something new to photograph. The first real stop of the day was in Depot Bay, which is one of my favorite towns on the Oregon coast. And I think it's one of the better spots around for whale watching. I didn't see any whales, but still fun to explore and get some photography in. So I walked through town for a bit and uh, went to this trail that takes you out to a little point on the rocks here. And uh, for some reason, the water just churns a lot over there and the, the waves are really cool and they crash into each other. And I've gotten some cool wave shots here before. And uh, I didn't get any footage of these guys, but there were a couple fishermen who were fishing and uh, they were okay with me taking a couple pictures of them. I only took a few. I didn't want to bother them too much. But it was cool to watch them fish. And I really like this shot. With the, the big wave incoming and the, the fishermen looking towards it. So from the Depot Bay area, I kept heading south. There's a little scenic detour, I guess, that uh, goes to a couple more scenic lookouts a little bit further off of Highway 101. And then it takes you down to the Devil's Punch Bowl State Natural Area, I believe. And I was the tide was too high for me to go down into the, the collapsed sea cave, but I once again got some clam chowder at Moe's. And uh, yeah, it was pretty good. I really like it in there. Really cool ambiance. It feels very much like the Oregon coast to me. I think this was called Agate Beach. And uh, I just walked around a little bit. Um, I took a, a few photos, but nothing that I'm super happy with. But it was nice to actually walk on the beach for the first time. I think this is the first time on the trip that I had actually gotten down onto the sand. Just went for a bit of a wander. And then nearby there were some really cool houses. This, this red house caught my eye and I drove by it and ended up pulling a U-turn and finding a place to park to come photograph it. Then I made it to Florence for the night, and uh, I didn't really know what to do. We're getting into the part of the Oregon coast that I'm not nearly as familiar with from here south, and I uh, decided to go check out the sand dunes. A lot of the sand dunes around there have, I guess, dune buggies and just, I don't know, various ATVs and, and motorized vehicles that I like to play around on them, so they're not super pristine looking from a photo perspective, but got one photo that I like of the road and then went into Old Town Florence, walked around the docks for a little bit and got dinner at a pretty good Mexican restaurant. And the tacos were, were decent and uh, I grew up in Texas so I'm pretty picky about my tacos. So 
the next day I woke up, got coffee, and headed south, which is the theme for the trip. And um, just went exploring again, found this lighthouse, but it was raining pretty hard and I didn't, uh, didn't really see any pictures. So I just enjoyed the coffee, enjoyed the view, and then kept heading south. first real stop of the day was uh, there a couple, two or three different state parks that are, you know, they, they border each other and, and they're really combined into one state park area, but Shore Acres, Cape Arago maybe, one other one. Um, so I drove down there and um, explored around, made breakfast in the car, my uh, typical road trip breakfast of Greek yogurt and homemade granola. It's very good. It was pretty cold that day though so I ended up eating it in the car after, after this shot but explored around and then went to Shore, Shore Acres State Park where um, it's one of the better spots on the coast to see the really big waves crash on the, the big surf days there were, there were some decent waves that day but nothing crazy sometimes you've seen pictures of enormous waves crashing on the Oregon coast. This is one of the spots that a lot of photographers like to come for that. This viewpoint in particular, the waves just crash right up onto that rock and people can stand on the overlook there. But the waves weren't really happening that big today, so I just wandered around and uh, checked out the rock formations, checked out the coast, the cliff lines. It was a pretty cool area. I'm not sure what caused the sandstone here to erode like this. It kind of looked like a coral reef. And uh, it's really cool to just walk around and check out the different formations. Definitely a cool spot for some photography. My understanding the Shore Acres State Park used to be owned by some like timber baron or something I don't know some really old rich dude and he donated it to the state of Oregon to be a state park he had this whole section of the the land that was this really impressive botanical gardens and that's just part of the state park now and it's the off season you know there's not much blooming the water is kind of brown and muddy looking but it was still really cool to explore around there and because it was the off season I pretty much had the whole place to myself there was like one other person drove south to Bandon, which is one of my favorite places on the whole west coast. Hadn't been there since early 2021. First stop is obviously fish and chips, and then I walked around a little bit before checking into my hotel, which was a bit run down as a lot of these places on the Oregon coast are, but it worked for the night and uh, it was kind of cozy. From there, I walked out to the, the cliffside promenade, I suppose. Just this uh, nice walk along the whole 
town, the whole edge of town, right up on the cliff. You can get down to the beach at a few different spots there. And uh, super cool. Felt like parts of, I don't know, Scotland or Ireland or something with just the, the cliff right on the ocean. up and it was my last day of the trip and um, the weather was looking kind of ominous. I had gotten a notification on my phone about a, a storm warning. They were saying don't, if you have a boat, if you're on a boat come into shore because there's a decent chance that you'll capsize. I guess the waves were going to be really big and uh, it's supposed to be incredibly windy. So not a great day for photography but I had to drive down the coast anyway to make it to my next stop so I <laughs> decided just to do the best that I could. <laughs> oh my god, it's so windy! It's probably like 40 or maybe 50 mile an hour wind. I don't... It's windy. I, I can... I tried to open my door and I could barely open my door. Watch this. <laughs> oh my god. It's not raining that hard. It's mostly just hurricane force winds almost outside. I just saw this guy over there. Just like... He got out of his car and he was just like leaning. And uh, there's a lighthouse here. I don't know if I'll be able to make it over there or not, but I kind of want to try. Um, I've been playing with just the 35 and 85 millimeter prime lenses this whole trip and it's been really nice. And I haven't felt the need or the desire at all to switch, but switching lenses in this weather is going to be just atrocious. And I'm wondering if I ship it on the 24 to 105. Oh my God. This car is going to blow off of the mountain. <laughs> this is crazy. I'll probably do the 24 to 105 just because this is pretty extreme conditions. <laughs> my god that was that was one of the most intense things I've ever done Woo! <laughs> oh my god I was trying to talk to that other guy we were having to yell at the top of our lungs <clears throat> he's like yeah this has got to be 70 mile an hour winds I agree feels like a fucking hurricane oh man that was crazy the rain was just stinging oh my god <laughs> I, I just set the camera on rapid fire and just... Uh, 
I don't know if I got anything good, but this was this was cool. The storm warning was uh, <laughs> justified. I'm glad I'm not out on a boat right now. Well, let's go see what this state park has to offer. Got on the rain pants this time, so uh, a little more prepared. It's windy. Outside. I don't know how much more of this I have in me today. It sure is beautiful though. I do like it here. So from there I just drove south to California. There were a lot of spots that I wanted to check out, but it was just too rainy to stop anymore for that day. Yeah, my cameras were wet enough. They, they did fine, but definitely not really great photography weather. So that'll do it for this trip. Next stop is California. That'll be in the next video. Bye.